this video today, I get to sit down with a pastor and a businessman at the same time. He's a pastor, he's an author, he runs businesses. I can't wait for him to share what he has under his belt. So right now, I just want to leave us a comment, a thumbs up if you find value in this video today. This is Boss His Money, where I bring people bossing the talents and the gifts that God has given them. So I'm so excited today. Thank welcome, you. Pastor. God bless you. Thank you for having me today. You are very welcome. Please, can you just tell my viewers who you are yes. and what you have been up to? So, Pastor Paul Brentley, I'm a pastor and founder of Fellowship Church in Dallas, North Carolina. And um, I started the church in 2002, uh, ordained in the ministry in 1994. And so we just give God the praise for what he's doing in our ministry. And uh, outside of ministry, which ministry is business as well. Yes. <laughs> I also have some businesses that I run. I serve on several boards uh, throughout the community, profit and nonprofit businesses. So uh, I'm just here to serve God and to serve God's people. Wow, that's too amazing. I believe that each and every one of us has been given a gift by God. But it seems like you've been given more than one gift. Mm -hmm. How do you manage uh, running a church mm -hmm. and also running all these businesses? Well, you have to prioritize your time. You have to be good at time management. I wouldn't say I'm the best at it, but I have worked at it to be better at it. And so you find the areas in your life or your ministry or church that needs your attention and you put your attention there. But probably the foremost best ingredient that I could offer is delegation. Mm. I understand that I don't have to do everything. Mm. And when I learned that, I learned that I, I don't have to micromanage. Right. I find someone that can do it, leave them alone and let them do their job. And sometimes if I have a question about my own business, mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to ask them because I don't know. Oh, that is so powerful. Delegation. Mm -hmm. That is really, really powerful. I think a lot of people, that's where they fail at mm -hmm. because they feel like maybe they can do it all by themselves. But from one, what you're telling us, it's just impossible. Yes. Running the ministry, running the businesses, you need to learn to delegate to others. Mm -hmm. So who has been like your greatest strength in what your is journey? My, my personal greatest strength? Yes. Administration. I think administration is a gift. It's, it's a gift where you can wear multiple hats at multiple times and still keep things organized. Mm. Another uh, gift of administration is administrating people. Mm. A lot of people can do the books. They can do, uh, they can balance their bank account. You know, they can handle uh, inventory and those kind of things, but how to handle people. That is very important. So you got to know personalities. You need to know what they like, what they don't like, who works together well, who doesn't work together well. Keep them as separate as possible. <laughs> and then the ones that do work well, keep them together. Keep them motivated. Uh, find out when someone's low, you help them come up. Someone's too high and they're leaving us and they won't let us catch up and know how to slow them down. So there's several things, and I think one of my strengths is reading people, understanding their gifts and strengths, and then urge them to walk in that way themselves, in that their gifts. So powerful, Pastor. Mm. Somebody once told me that the greatest investment you can have is in people. Oh, wow. That's good. What would you say about that? I would agree with that because the, the multiplication that happens with that is astronomical. People don't know a lot about Billy Sunday. Mm. And if you Google Billy Sunday, you'll find out a lot. But people know a lot about Billy Graham. Yes. Someone had to lead, lead Billy Graham to Jesus. But people don't know who that was. But look at all of the people that Billy Graham has impacted. So when you understand that, you can pour into someone's life. Mm -hmm. 
And as you're pouring into them, you never know the extramental, uh, the extraordinary mm. impact that it'll make throughout the ages. It can still be everlasting when, when someone's dead and gone. The scripture says that um, Abel's blood still cried out. Mm -hmm. He was gone. Mm -hmm. So he was still speaking from the grave. And there's people today that are still speaking in the gr from the grave through me mm. that poured into my life. Yes. And so I want to do that for others. You know, one of, the, uh, one of the saddest things about a cemetery to me mm -hmm. is inside of there are dreams and books mm. that were never written. Yes. So what we have to do while we're alive, we got to do everything we can. So I want to pull it out of people. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is so, so powerful. I want to know what came first for you. Was it, uh, I know running a church is a business as well. Sure. Not in the sense that the world looks at it, but it's handling God's business. But what came first? Was it running the church, being a pastor, or was it running these businesses that yes. you are running apart from the church? That's a great question. So the first thing was business, not mm -hmm. church. I was an assistant pastor. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take care of my pastor. I never wanted to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be loyal to him and be his right hand, take care of him and support the church financially. That was my only aspiration. Mm. So I did that. I went in business long before I went into pastoring churches. Mm. Yeah. That's kind of uh, my husband's kind of heart too. Mm. Before you could uh, become a pastor, you wanted just to support the pastor. Mm. Financially, you wanted to be a businessman. I don't know okay. how that changed. Because a lot of people believe that uh, when you are a pastor, then you cannot run other businesses. Right. You know, so what do you have to say about that? Yeah, so you, people have to understand that ministry is ministry. That calling is in you wherever you are, okay? So running a business doesn't take away from the ministry when you understand priorities. Yeah. First is God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness. Then everything else will be added unto you. So with that in mind, there's all kind of things I can pursue. Some people will say, well, a pastor can't be married, but I have a lovely wife, exactly. you know, and I have to know how to balance family mm -hmm. and balance church. Yes. So I wrote a book about that called Two Wives in the Parsonage or in the I pastor's house. I can't to read that book, Pastor. <laughs> Just the title itself, I was like intrigued about it. Yeah, so it's how to balance church life and family life. Mm -hmm. So the whole book is about balance. So how to balance a business and a church, your family all, whatever things you have going on in your life, you need to learn how to balance them. And so I think your question was, can a pastor be in business? Absolutely. Paul was a tent maker. And in the other, Aquila and Priscilla also were making tents. Yes. And so Paul, they had businesses mm -hmm. and Paul was running them. Another man that was in business that was in the ministry was Peter. Yes. He was a fisherman. Mm -hmm. And even after Jesus died, it was like, we're going back to Fishing, fishing again yeah yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they had that in them mm -hmm. and then when you go out in the missionary field as you know being in america mm -hmm. it's not your home mm -hmm. it's a, a foreign country to you yes. so all of those apostles when they left out of jerusalem and went into these other places they needed to know how to survive yes. and it wasn't always someone taking care of them financially mm -hmm. And so they learned how to do that and balance that in their ministry. Jesus taught them that for three and a half years. So definitely a minister can multitask mm -hmm. and do multiple things. But that doesn't take away from his calling. Mm. He still has to put in the time and the effort to make his calling and election sure. That is so enlightening, mm. I should say. Because a lot of people wonder, how can someone be a pastor and uh, also be running businesses or working. Mm -hmm. You've just given us an answer to that, which is very good because a lot of people ask that question. Mm -hmm. So now that you're doing both, I believe that when you are running a business, whether you are not a pastor or not, you need to take care of the business like it's God's business, mm -hmm. right? Right, absolutely. And so the, the church administration and church government must be ran the same way. Mm -hmm. And as a business, you know, because if you let it down, it can bankrupt as well. Mm -hmm. 
I've had experience with that. I know a pastor mm -hmm. that also had a business and he ended up going bankrupt and losing both the business and the ministry. Mm -hmm. He had to start all over again mm -hmm. because he got focused on the business and making money than on the church business. And so that's, there's challenges with it. Mm -hmm. One is greed. You know, if you think you want to make more money, more money, more money, and you get so focused on that, the church can lack in that. So that can be a big challenge. And I think that's why so many people come to us and say, well, how can you do both? Mm. Because they think we're going to get too focused on the other. But we don't go back to my scripture, God first, yes. you know, then family, mm -hmm. then income. Oh, yes. I love that point of focus mm. and also balance. Balance. Because a lot of times uh, when you go too far on one end, the other thing is going to suffer. Sure. But the calling is the most important thing, Amen. what God has called you to yes. do. And I believe that in every business, you can still do the work of God as well. Yes. What do you think of somebody, not a pastor really, but running a business and being able to reach out mm. to the lost in our businesses? What can you comment about that? Yeah, so when you're a business owner yourself, you make the rules. Now, if you work for a company, they may have rules with sharing the gospel, okay? But in my businesses, we can share the gospel because I own the business. Yes. So uh, to a customer, to a coworker, to a, a supplier or someone bringing in our inventory, we can witness to them all day long. We can talk about God. And even more specific, we can talk about Jesus. Amen, amen. I <laughs> love that. Yeah. That is one of the advantages as a child of God of being able to own a business or to run a business because you can actually dictate what you can do mm -hmm. in your own business. Right. And when we say we are heads, mm -hmm. I guess that's one of the uh, meaning of being a head because sometimes as children of God, we want to sit in the sidelines and not be able to do much more because we are not heading much. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I wanted to ask about the books that you've written. Okay. Um, I noticed that you have written a lot of books. Can you enlighten us about the books that you have written? Sure. So the first book was Loyalty to the Man of God. That goes back to my passion of wanting to serve. What does it mean to be the second man? How does the second man not try to be the first man? Okay, that's one point in the book. Another point is for the first man to understand the role of the second man and not feel threatened by him. So I, that was the very first book that I wrote. And then I think the second book may have been Two Wives in the Pastor's House. Yeah, so we talked about that one a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then we wrote um, Business by Faith. It's just basically how to start a business uh, on faith principles. And then we wrote one called Black Lies Matter, too. Black Lies. Lies, yeah. And that, the premise of that book is how the black community in America has been lied to, to depend on the government, not to be entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. that they can't start businesses, they have to stay in a certain environment, mm -hmm. community, don't go outside of that. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to combat those lies mm -hmm. and let people know that they can, as an American, in this country, do whatever they want. There, there's no rules or regulations against us. We can prosper and do whatever God called us to do without any restraints. So we, in the book, we also touch on racism and um, bigotry and prejudice as well, because they do still exist. But the, the key to the book is you don't have to suffer or be, let, or be less. You don't have to accept the lie that just because you're black, you're less. Mm. And then the last book that we've written is a um, devotional guide. Right. It's 21 weeks of victory. Mm. And so each day you read the devotion and then you write down daily for seven days. Mm -hmm. You write down what that devotion means to you. Yes. At the end of the 21 days or 21 weeks, it, you will have victory. Yeah. That's so powerful. Right. That's so powerful. Where can people get these books if All, they wanted to reach out and buy some of these books? Yeah, so paulbrentley.com. Mm -hmm. They can get all the books there. Also, they're all on Amazon mm -hmm. and walmart.com. Okay. 
So PaulBrindley.com, mm -hmm. Amazon.com, mm -hmm. and Walmart.com. Yeah. That's exciting, Pastor. How else do you um, uh, impact the people around you? Do you hold like seminars mm -hmm. or what else do you do just to let people know that they can be more than yeah. what they are right now? So I also have partnered with a group called the North Carolina Faith and Freedom Coalition. Mm -hmm. And so I go out all over the state and talk to people to empower them. Mm -hmm empower them to know the, how to balance politics mm -hmm. and what, what the politician is running on. Okay. So the issues, it's not Democrat or Republican, but the issues. Mm -hmm. So we look at the issues and then we know where the candidate stands on the issue. Mm -hmm. And so I go around the state and I promote the issues and where the candidates stand. That's something else that I do. Another way <laughs> to empower people is what I'm fortunate and blessed to be in Pittsburgh tonight, mm -hmm. this weekend, yeah. and I was able to do a business seminar this morning, mm -hmm. and it was awesome. I love doing that, empowering people. So seminars, uh, shows, those type of things where people can get tickets and come or register like they did here, and we can do an event that way. So how do they know where you are this week or what you're doing? Yeah, so on my website is my itinerary, mm -hmm. so they can find me wherever I am. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much, Pastor. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. There's one more question, okay. Pastor. Where I come from, they say that behind every successful man, there is somebody. Yes. Yes. What do you say about that? I agree, and it's my wife. She is, she is the, the backbone of what I do. Mm -hmm. She's my joy. She's the twinkle in my eye. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we are partners, not only in life, in marriage, but in business as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time where I did not include her mm -hmm. in all of my business affairs. Mm -hmm. And we had a big business problem uh, in the business. And when she found out all about it, she was, she's like, I didn't know all this was going on. Mm -hmm. So since then, I've changed. Mm -hmm. And I've included her. She knows what's going on what's happening in the business. Mm -hmm. She's doing, she's, she's uh, watching the pennies. She's yes. watching the dollars. She's watching the thousands of dollars and she knows where they're going. Yes. She knows what we're doing with them. And that's her strength. Yes. And so, yeah, we're partners. Celeste and I, we're partners. We have a son, mm -hmm. Paul, we call him little Paul mm -hmm. um, as well. We're all not only a family, but we're, we're an incorporation too. Amen. I heard that he's not little, as little as you call him, little boy is yeah. tall, right? Yeah, he's 6'4", over 250 pounds. Oh, my he's big. God. Uh, the Bible tells us that uh, two are better than one, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. And I thank God that your wife is like the backbone mm -hmm. of this whole thing that you're doing. Yes. Because some businesses, you find that maybe it's just the husband mm -hmm. running it or maybe it's just the wife running it right. and they end up not doing too well that's correct so i thank god for the way you are doing it pastor thank you so much is there anything i've not asked no you did a great job thank you for allowing me to be on your show i appreciate your book as well uh, i want to say this to the readers you need to get her book or the watch people watching get her book as well you had books on my book table today, and you sold out. So I thought that was awesome that you, you did that. So congratulations on your new book. Thank you so much, Pastor. Uh, we have learned a lot today. I'm sure my viewers have learned a lot. You can be a pastor, hmm. which is doing God's business, and you can also run other businesses. That's what we call building the kingdom. Amen. So if you have that gift do not hesitate. Reach out to the man of God. He will give you ideas on how to go forth. Thank you so much, Pastor, for your time. God bless you. Thank you for having me. Amen.